Hey guys, this is Nefarious411 and welcome to episode 78 of my Modded Survival series. If you recall from the uh, previous episode, we came over here in the, uh, the new area of my uh, Batania section and uh, we fought the Guardian of Gaia and that went really, really well. Um, this was the, uh, the first um, boss of the, uh, the Batania and today I would actually like to try looking at the, uh, the second one because if you uh, take a look in the uh, Lexica Batania, you'll see under the Alphamancy that after the uh, the ritual of Gaia, there's a ritual of Gaia 2, and uh, this is basically um, an extra level on top of um, the uh, the Gaia Guardian, and I would kind of like to do that. But before we um, get into that, let me show you a couple of things that I've done in between episodes, and one of those you might notice that all of my uh, flowers that were producing mana up here are now gone. I've rearranged a couple of things. You can see that now I put my, uh, um, what is this called, the runic altar um, in a new spot over here. Um, kind of uh, separated things out a little bit. I think most of the crafting items are probably going to uh, stay up here, but if we go down a level, uh, we can see that I put all my endo flames down here, um, and this is uh, working out pretty well. I even have my um, my little TNT area for my uh, ent entropiniums um, and some uh, hardened glass. I had a couple of other explosions and I ended up having to create new entropiniums and I don't want to uh, do that anymore. So I went ahead and put some hardened glass and underneath that is the uh, Ender IO reinforced obsidian. Um, so let me uh, take a look down here and you can see that I uh, basically kept most of this the, the same. I did have to uh, run the uh, insulated red uh, redstone conduit up here because of the fact that we still need to uh, monitor the, uh, the levels of this uh, mana pool here. And that will stop not only the TNT but also the endo flames and using the uh, spark here with a... What is this recessive um, augmentation? It's able to push all of its mana upstairs, and you can see that it's connected to every single uh, mana pool up there, or anything that has a, a spark in the other uh, network. Um, so that actually works out really well. So if I were to uh, craft something real quick, let me uh, take some mana steel, mana diamond, and a mana pearl, and come over here and craft a terra steel. We'll see that this is going to go by really quickly because of the amount of mana in the area and it's already done and we have a Terra Steel and I don't know if that was enough to start this back up and it is and you can see that it automatically started up more mana generation down here and I think that is very very cool and you can see that it's uh, drained about half of what it had before but in today's episode, I would like to, um, again, take a look at the uh, the Gaia 2, Ritual of Gaia 2. But before we do that, I would like to be able to create potions. And if you remember, um, the potions that I, were, I was uh, using before, um, basically anything that I was getting from the, the mob farm, and I didn't really care much for that because... Uh, it's not very effective and I think some of these were um, just the first level of potions so like a uh, region one yeah this is instant health one I can do a little bit better than that and for this I can actually take a look in the uh, Lexi Lexica Batania and here I go again not being able to pronounce it um, under the uh, natural apparatus we can see that there is a botanical brewery and uh, with the uh, brewery, um, we have the ability to uh, create potions or brews, um, just as you would with a vanilla brewing stand, but this is going to be a little bit different because each one of these bottles, um, you can either get uh, the uh, mana glass vials, or you can get one of these flasks. Um, the uh, vials can hold four drinks, whereas the uh, flask can hold six. And it's really nice because we've already opened up the other uh, portal to Alfheim before and got some of this Alf glass. And that's basically taking a uh, mana glass and throwing it in there. And by uh, using this, you can see that putting it in the same pattern as any of these uh, potion bottles, we get Alf glass, glass, fat, I can't even talk. Alf glass flask. That is very, very difficult to say. 
But uh, let me get away from here for a second. Um, might have to uh, put a uh, sound muffler down there. And it looks like I actually have one. Nice. So let me go ahead and run down here. Because I don't need this to be loud. Ah, that is so much better. Uh, well, maybe not. Well, I think it helped a little bit. I might end up having to uh, put a couple down there. But uh, let's go ahead and create one of these brewing stands. And if I take a look, it's going to require some living rock, a rune of mana, block of mana steel, and a vanilla uh, brewing stand. This should be uh, fairly quick to make, and it looks like I already have one of those guys. And a rune of mana. Uh, doesn't look like I have one of those. Let me go ahead and create one real quick, and that should be three of those, and two of those, I think. Rune of mana. Five and one. All right, I was close, I was close. All right, so let me grab two more of those. And this is actually fairly quick as well, because of the fact that we have this uh, Gaia mana spreader on it now. And it will actually create this just like that. <laughs> so yeah, we are able to po push a lot of mana on it and it crashes things really, really quickly. So let me go ahead and uh, make this stand and I'll be right back. All right, I am back and that was actually uh, pretty quick. And now we have a botanical brewery. And all I'm going to do is uh, place it over here. I went ahead and set up a, a Gaia mana spreader. Um, that way we can actually uh, point uh, mana right at the uh, botanical brewery. And uh, for now, um, I actually want to take a look. I could uh, just look this up in the uh, Lexica Botania, but it's probably easier just to type flask. And uh, looking in any eye, a couple of ones that I want to uh, create, probably uh, the Strength 2. Um, I think the, uh, the Strength uh, potion could help with uh, getting better hits, um, harder hits, so that uh, we can uh, kill the uh, Guardian of Gaia a little bit faster. And just like any potion, we're going to start out with uh, Nether Wart, um, basically to uh, create the Awkward uh, potion, uh, but this one, we put all of them on at the same time and I think it looks really cool <laughs> the way it has it here um, it just uh, plops it down on these little platforms and as soon as I put the uh, last ingredient there it just dumps a bunch of mana over there and now it's done nice and uh, I might well that one gives me six drinks so that one might be fine as it is so the next thing thing that I want to do is the uh, potion of resistance um, let's see where is that resistance I think it's a brown one isn't it resistance or am I thinking of something else? Oh, resistance is a uh, flask of fortitude. There we go. So resistance two, um, that's going to be some iron and leather. So that one's pretty simple. So you always have to start with the uh, flask and then you can uh, put the other items on there. And there we go. That is pretty simple. So let's take a look at now. Wow, that was really quick. <laughs> now that we have the uh, the, uh, the Gaia uh, Mana Spreader doesn't take any time at all to uh, come up with these. And let's see, Fire Resistance. I don't know what we're going to expect um, from this guy. So I don't even know what some of these are. Maybe that's a, a good thing to look into the uh, Lexica Batania um, because you can figure out what they actually are. Um, basically what their equivalent is like the uh, brew of adrenaline is going to be haste two, um, brew of mending, um, instant health two. That one might be a good one, so let's go ahead and do that one. Um, that was pink, I think. There we go. And this is a glistering melon and potato. Let's see if I have any of those. I don't. Do I have melon? I do. I have a few. And how do I make glistering melon? It's going to be honey or gold. Don't think I have honey in this system. 
but I do have plenty of gold. So let me go ahead and grab a little bit of that. Come over here and throw this guy in here. There we go. Glistering melon. And is that it? And a potato. And it can't be a cooked potato. So let me go ahead and just grab a normal potato. It doesn't look like I have any. So <laughs> let me run down to the other farm real quick. Right down here. And I have plenty of potatoes. There we go. Thank you. And I think that should be good for us to uh, get the, uh, the next brew. So let me craft up a couple more brews. There might be a couple that I want to uh, take a look at. And then we will go ahead and get ready for the Guardian Gaia 2. Alright, I am back. And I uh, ended up... Um, just stopping at the uh, Flask of Revitalization, Flask of Fortitude, Flask of Vigor, and Flask of Mending. Um, so I actually want to rearrange these a little bit because I think uh, Strength I'll probably just drink throughout. Uh, same with uh, Resistance 2, but uh, Regen and Instant Health I'll probably wait until I'm actually in need of those. Um, but I think we're ready to go. So if I take a look at the... Uh, Lexica Batania at the Ritual of Gaia 2. Um, we can read through this. Um, One would think that combining two most powerful resources known to existence in the form of Terra Still and Gaia Spirits would create an unstoppable uh, material. It seems that the material is very much stoppable, though. In fact, the two forces cancel each other out when combined into an ingot, creating an utterly useless alloy. Okay, This ingot though due to uh, concentrated energy and power in it, does allow for the summoning of a stronger Gaia Guardian with more resistance, strength, and speed. For all of this, it also drops more Gaia Spirits than normal, as well as a handful of goodies and rare treasure, making it a worthwhile foe. And in order to do that, we basically surround it with Gaia Spirits. And fortunately, in between episodes, I forgot to mention this, I did fight the Gaia uh, Guardian a couple more times, like three times, I think. I can't remember how many times. I was enjoying it. I wasn't really getting hurt too much by the, uh, the first... Um, um, Gaia Spirit or Gaia Guardian. Um, so I went ahead and did it a few times. So I have plenty of these Gaia Spirits to go around. So I am going to make my way here. I'm assuming that it's going to be using the exact same um, ritual. So let's go ahead and do this. All right. Let me go ahead and drink these up. There we go. And he's supposed to be a lot faster on this one. Uh, we'll just have to see. Um, keep an eye on my health. I don't have any extra stuff except for the, uh, the flasks. Um, so I didn't do any kind of uh, changes in my armor set. Um, might have to eat occasionally. And it does look like he has quite a bit more health. And now he's like shooting some sort of uh, particle effects. And... Uh, kind of a form of little, I don't know what that is, like little asteroids, <laughs> little meteorites that are uh, hitting me like stardust, so I don't know what that is all about, but this seems to be reasonable, um, not too different from the other battle, uh, I'm sorry if it's a little bit jerky, um, every time he hits me I kind of uh, stutter a little bit. And let me go ahead and drink some of this stuff. I don't think I actually drank that. Um, probably need one of these. Oops, not that. Eat a little bit. At least he doesn't hurt me while I'm uh, repairing myself. So at least he's uh, got that going for him. And unlike the Ender Dragon, it doesn't look like he kills himself. Which is good for me, because that allows me to uh, take a little bit more time and take a little bit more caution. I kind of like that uh, little star effect. Um, I don't know if that's causing any kind of lag on my side. I do not know what my health is like. I need to pay attention to that. Ooh, yes. Ah, not that. You're a jerk. <laughs> I do have to uh, keep an eye on my health. Um, let me 
take a little bit more of these. Looks like he's going to uh, start hitting me with those things as well, the little um, stardust things. So that's kind of annoying. Let me go ahead and kill all of the uh, the guys that he's summoning. I have a problem with uh, keeping an eye on my health while I'm doing these battles. I'm trying to curve that a little bit. So let's see how well this works. Looks like I get hungry fast whenever I'm doing all of the uh, hitting with my sword. All I'm doing is just spamming the button. It's probably good enough. There we go. Looks like he's back in action. Um, where'd he go? Where'd he go? I don't want to die, so I'm going to drink one of these guys. Uh, I don't know what my health is like. <laughs> I just want him to do dead. I hate withering effect. Um, where'd he go? Oh, he this is uh, this one's a lot more annoying, and I think I'm going to end up dying from this one. I do not know what my health is like. Oh, it's not that bad at all. Um, come here. Gosh, <laughs> he is hard to hit. Um, all right, calm down. As long as I don't get too much on the other. Uh, withering side. <sighs> wow, he is fast. I think a lot of this is just luck to be next to him whenever he uh, warps past you. Because this is annoying otherwise. I don't know how many of these I'm going to be able to do. At least I have the other uh, flask. Eat a little bit. There we go. Don't know what my health is like because I'm withered. There we go. Come here. He is almost dead. I just need to get a couple good hits on him, and there we go. Woo! Oh boy. That was definitely more intense than the other one, I tell you that. And I did quite a bit of drinking of these. I guess I could have done these. Didn't even think of uh, drinking the uh, revitalization. But we did come and get what we came for. Um. Let me go ahead and clean up some of the useless stuff. Things that you're already familiar with. Here we go. Get rid of those guys. And a little bit of that. I don't know what the uh, scathe disc is. But we got a, another miniature yellow heart. And we should probably take a look at these. Because we are accruing these. But we haven't actually used them. And we should probably do that. We got a couple of runes of sloth. Uh, like twice the amount of Gaia Spirits, which is really cool. And we have a Will of Kirill. And I am not exactly sure what this is. So craft with Terrastil Helmet. And add the following effect. Critical hits. Apply a Wither effect. Um, that might be good. So let me go ahead and apply that guy. And it looks like this will give us... Does it do anything? Okay, so it's hard to see because of the uh, strength and uh, resistance there, but it does look like it will put the uh, will of Kirill so we can start withering um, other things. And it looks like there's a really cool uh, little animation on my forehead now. <laughs> Even though it's probably hard to see through all of the arrows, that is uh, pretty cool. I like that a lot. And uh, the other thing that we got was the Dice of Fate. And basically... You get a random um, prize, so to speak, from uh, beating the uh, the Gaia Guardian 2. And I am going to roll the dice right now. And achievement get Angel of Death. Um, I need to read this real quick. Um, what is this? <laughs> this is What is this called? Eye of Flugel. Vision of the past on one's mind, round and round, is the memory matrix, and their viable interactions will take the psyche back to basics. Um, that does not help me. Flugel. 
Nope, that's not right. I, uh, I, um, is this it? No. I am not sure what this is, and I'm afraid to actually bind it to anything yet. Um, I might have to uh, do a little bit of research on this and uh, come right back. Alright, I am back, and I didn't really find a lot of information on the Eye of Flugel, um, but let me come in here, and there is this uh, little section that I didn't read before, the Relics of the Asir, and uh, there's an old tale from the High Clans of Alfheim. It says that among the lines of the one who rolls the dice of fate is to be rewarded with the gifts of the gods. Uh, so there's a... Uh, so-called relics of the Asir, which are rumored to be unique and soul-bound, um, by which only one will ever be rewarded to one individual, and only they might use it. So, th um, from my understanding, there's actually six different things that you can get from those dice, and uh, this is one of them. I have a suspicion I know what this is, and I think that this is a way to basically warp to all of these different places so where I'm standing now I can uh, bind it to one of these warp points and I'll probably just bind it here and let's see what that does um, right click to teleport left shift uh, click to remove so let me go ahead and come up here and let's say that this area my Batania area is I don't know <laughs> I have no idea um, Aquarius. Sure, why not? Uh, so let's take a look, and if we find Libra again, we'll just have to uh, remember all of the um, astrology signs and where they go. But if I right click, I teleport there, and that is really cool. I think it might use a little bit of mana for my tablet. I don't know what would happen if I didn't have a mana tablet, um, but it's pretty cool to uh, be able to uh, just teleport. Um, I can uh, reassign these later. So this is actually a really cool item to have. Um, I kind of want to uh, beat the Gaia Guardian 2 a few more times just to get the um, other um, rolls of the dice, see what other things it has. But of course, I'm probably going to do that um, in between episodes. Um, I showed you the uh, the battle once, but I think the, you know, the rest of them I'll probably do off camera. So um, the thing that I want to uh, start working on next, and it's probably going to take me an episode or two, is probably start um, doing a little bit of automation of the Batania stuff. I um, haven't really decided what I'm going to do on this. I have gone through over and over, and I've been kind of avoiding this uh, for a while um, because I haven't really found a good mod to uh, do what I wanted. I know that there are things that you can do with the uh, with the uh, <clears throat> Batania itself, um, such as being able to, uh, let's see, where is that? Um, create the uh, Corporea, Corporea? <laughs> basically you can uh, have a magical system similar to the uh, um, sparks that we have here. There's a corporea um, little sparks that you can put on top of chests and stuff and it basically creates a network of items so that you can uh, create um, one of these things called a corporea index and uh, be able to request things from it um, and that's pretty nice to be able to uh, request things from it that way but it does uh, basically intercept the uh, the chat so whenever you're close to it you can uh, come into chat and say iron ingot and it would be able to intercept that and look through all of your chest to see if it has an iron ingot in there and be able to return it it's kind of nice, but you kind of have to remember the uh, the wording to a lot of the stuff, and I, I'm not really a big fan of that. Um, and I looked for anything like uh, logistical pipes and stuff like that in the uh, NEI, and none of those mods exist. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is um, using Applied Energistics. Eh. 
I don't know if I'm going to do too much on it because I've already got an applied energistics down there, but I know that some of you were wanting to see a little bit more on the automation of the, uh, the Batania stuff. I might show a couple of things, but honestly, I think the whole point of this mod was to uh, basically put um, no user interfaces. You'll not find any uh, UIs in this uh, mod pack, but it was also really meant for a lot of the, the manual stuff. Uh, we have some automations down here for the uh, production of mana, and I think that's acceptable. But uh, we might do a couple of things for creating uh, maybe runes or something. Uh, but uh, that's probably about as much as I want to do. I kind of like coming in here and creating all of these things manually. But uh, let me go ahead and create a small A system. And I'm just going to create a uh, Applied Energistics uh, controller, maybe uh, ME drive, just similar to the other uh, setup that I did in the B area. And I will be right back. Alright guys, I am back and you can see that down here, instead of a uh, single tunnel, I decided to uh, carve out the entire area and uh, made the uh, the stone bricks for the other uh, walls and uh, went ahead and uh, created the ME controller and ME drive, added four of the uh, ME uh, 4K storage cells and a uh, couple of monitors and I think this will uh, work out pretty well in the, uh, the long term. but. Um, for the remaining time, I think we have about six minutes left of this uh, video. I think the uh, first thing that I would like to do in the allotted time is to basically create um, automation for creating like uh, mana petals or any other um, <clears throat> item that can be converted uh, from a mana pool. So let me go ahead and run out here. And this is going to be uh, for my ME cable and I am going to place a mana pool right here. I think this is probably as good as any right now. Um, eventually I'll need to uh, create the uh, catalyst down there but I think this will work out pretty well and as soon as I put a spark on it should be connected to a network maybe? New? No. Might be a little bit too far yeah, unfortunately it's a little too far, so I might have to uh, pull this back. Um, did I get that back? And it looks like it. Um, I didn't really want it this close, but maybe I can have it this close. We'll uh, work around it. I might end up having to move this, but you can see that now that this is uh, closer, um, it's able to uh, connect to that uh, mana pool up there, and because this one is augmented with the... Uh, um, what is that called? Augmentation recessive? Is that right? Yeah, recessive. It's able to uh, push the uh, the mana pool contents down to this one and uh, fill this one up pretty well. <clears throat> and this will uh, be good for any kind of uh, auto crafting and that's what we're going to do. Um, as I said, this will probably be moved um, sometime because I do not really like it there. So the uh, next thing that I want to do is uh, create a crate and I think that might be with planks if I'm not mistaken oops I thought I got both of those there we go nope there it is cool open crate and that still seems a little loud down here even though I have um, the uh, sound muffler and I think that might be because of the uh, guys over there. But uh, let me go ahead and see if I can work through this real fast. And uh, let me just place my open crate right there. And uh, that should allow me to uh, drop items. Let me just make sure that my ring of magnetization is off. I wonder if that was causing any issues down here. And it looks like it may have. So I might end up having to uh, throw a bunch of charcoal back over there. All right, so now um, it's just a matter of um, automating this a little bit. Um, let me go ahead and grab an ME interface, just as I normally would with any kind of crafting. And this uh, should allow me to at least put it maybe right there for now. It's kind of an ugly eyesore right now, but uh, hopefully we can uh, clean this up later. There we go. 
That should work for that one. So now, let's say that I want some mana petals. Um, let me grab a pattern. I guess I didn't make any uh, patterns for my stuff down here. So let me go ahead and create some patterns. One is fine for now. And let me say that one mystical, or one mana petal, is going to be one of these guys. There we go. Encode that pattern. And if I put this in the chest here, or the uh, ME interface, I should be able to uh, craft it, but right now it's a uh, lime, which is fine because that's exactly what I asked for. So let me go ahead and grab the uh, the lime that we have, convert all of those, and now if I were to craft one of those, oops, I actually have to click on the start button, and I don't have any CPUs available, and I forgot about that part. So let me uh, processor. Grab those guys, and what is that called? It's like 4K, there we go. Created them, but I forgot to actually pull them into the, uh, the system, or into my uh, area here. Let me go ahead and hook these guys up. Here we go. <clears throat> so I should be able to craft one of these now, I hope. Now that we have a crafting processor, and there we go, nice. So now it's just a matter of making sure that anything dropped into the other uh, pool actually gets pulled out. And for that, just temporarily, I'm going to add a hopper hawk. There we go. And if I grab another interface, I should be able just to pull this directly in. There is going to be a small chance small chance that the hopper hawk could potentially grab the items before uh, they've converted but I should be able to do this uh, fairly quick um, so if I not do that apparently where did that go? Oh, it's still expecting that to be crafted because I didn't tell it that it was done. There we go. So now that AE's happy, I can craft another one of these guys. And there we go, it crafted it. And now we should have three, nice. So I should be able to add um, a few of these recipes in there. I don't really know if I want to bother with converting the uh, the petals into mana petals, that seems to be kind of a waste of patterns. Um, <laughs> it might be easier to do some other things with that. But um, this will at least start us with any kind of um, automations for Batania. Um, I kind of want to uh, keep everything down here um, rather than up on the other surface because I assume that up here is where I probably do all of my uh, manual crafting. So I'll probably keep this up here as that because I don't really want a bunch of machines in this area. And I think this looks uh, pretty good so far. Even though this uh, room probably needs uh, quite a bit of work to make it look a little bit better. But um, I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. In between episodes, I do plan on fighting the Gaia Guardian uh, 2 um, a couple more times. See if we can get any more of the... Uh, the dice uh, droppings, uh, these little guys right here. That way we can see if we can get more of the uh, the relics of the Aesir. And uh, maybe it's Aesir. I'm not sure what it's called. But um, I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you can rate and comment down below, it would be greatly appreciated. And also, if you like the series, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But for now, this is goodbye.